Hello and welcome to the 11th of our ACCA F5 lecture recaps. This one was on decisions. So the first decision that we looked at was scarce resources. When we have scarce resources. So we're thinking here again about make or buy that we talked about in the last session. But we're thinking about it when resources are limited. So we may have limited machine hours. We may have limited labour hours. So we need to decide which product should we outsource, which should we buy in and which should we make. The rule when it comes to scarce resources is that we buy in the element with the lowest extra variable cost per unit of scarce resource. So we buy in the element with the lowest extra variable cost per unit of scarce resource. Not per unit produced, but per unit of scarce resource. So let's look at an example and that's the best way to see how this works. So our illustration is that we have A and B as our two products. We produce 5,000 of each, but we only have 30,000 machine hours available. The details are that A takes four machine hours to produce, B takes six. A costs £25 to make and 34 for B. But to buy A in will cost 27 and to buy B in will cost 38. So first of all, let's produce a little table to show that we need more than the 30,000 hours available. And there it is. So we, we're making 5,000 of each of A and B times the number of hours it takes equals a total of 50,000 machine hours required. But remember, we have only 30,000 available. So which should we buy in, A or B? We need to use the rule, compare the extra variable cost per machine hour. So that's what we've done here. So to buy A in per unit costs 27, whereas it costs us 25 to make it, giving us a difference of two. Okay, so the extra variable cost per unit is two for A and four for B, but we're not looking at per unit of production here. We're looking at per unit of scarce resource. Machine hours are our scarce resource. It takes four hours to produce a unit of A and six hours to produce a unit of B. So the extra cost per machine hour saved of A is 50 pence and B is 67 pence. So that means to buy B in would cost us 67 pence per machine hour that we save whereas A would cost us 50 per machine hour. Now that means that we should buy in A because it is the lowest cost. We may as well make B because if we buy it in, it's going to cost us more than buying in A. So the advice is that we will buy in A because the extra cost is less. So on to outsourcing. We mentioned outsourcing in our last session. The syllabus wants you to know what the advantages and disadvantages of outsourcing are. So on the plus side, the pros. Well, the first one is that the firm can focus on their core competencies. So rather than focusing on, say, payroll or canteen services, they can outsource those and focus on their core competencies, i.e. what is making them money. A specialist should equal quality and efficiency. So by outsourcing to a specialist, it should give you better quality and better efficiency than doing it yourself. It's probably a better use of capital. You should use the capital that you have in the business to invest in new products or new projects rather than doing things that aren't your core competencies. Better to outsource those. Also, the outsourcer should be better able to respond to fluctuations in demand. You would maybe have to take on new staff, new employees, whereas the outsourcer should have resources available to respond to maybe fluctuations in demand. On the downside, well, you lose control. That's the big downside. You lose control of whatever it is you're going to outsource. Also, you can't be guaranteed reliability and quality. You may upset your workforce. Your workforce may feel that some of them are going to lose their jobs and everyone's job may feel under threat. So when it comes to further processing, what are we asking here? Well, we're sh saying, should we sell now or process further? If you think back to your process costing in prior modules, 
you had a process where you maybe put in one uh, input and that was then processed to a point where it could be split off. So the question was at that split off point, do you process it further or do you sell it in its current state? Think about oil. You know, oil is put into a process and coming out the other end, you maybe have petrol or diesel and you can maybe process it further into more refined products. So do you sell it at that point or do you refine it further? So you basically have to analyze the costs that you're given in the scenario. Remember that sunk costs are irrelevant. So just work through the costs that you're given in the scenario and remember that sunk costs are irrelevant. The illustration that we did in class meant that we found that it was better to further process given the further costs and revenues. When it comes to shutdown decisions, the first step in a shutdown decision is to evaluate the current earnings or losses. If you're still making profits, then why shut it down? Number two, look at the financial consequences of shutting. Okay, so there might be redundancies which are going to cost you a lot of money, but also there'd be equipment sale. So you can maybe sell some bits of equipment or um, fixtures and fittings. Can you recoup some money from those? So look at the financial consequences of shutting. Step three, compare the results. Okay, so compare cost benefit analysis, compare what the costs are as to what you're going to get in. And step four, remember that your fixed costs are incurred anyway. So if you're given fixed costs in a scenario, those are incurred anyway. You're going to have to cover those with your other divisions if you choose to say shut one division down. So that was our lecture on decision making.